Hey guys, it's Mike Taylor, aka Battleship Cobra. Today I'm going to go through the process of doing an SAP client reinstallation. I've had a lot of questions from people on how to do this. This is my process and this is how I do a complete uninstall. This video is primarily for people who are having major issues with their SAP client. Maybe it's crashing, maybe an add-on isn't running properly, maybe you're just having some other issues, uh, it's running slow or something. Uh, this method I'm going to show you is uh, extreme and thorough. It is, you know, everything I would do if I'm having a big issue with an SAP client and I want to uh, reinstall it totally from scratch. So let's get started. First step, you're going to want to go and uninstall everything off of your machine relating to the SAP client. So you want SAP Business One client. So this is going to go, I'm going to tell you what to do here, and then I'm going to just skip ahead so it doesn't uh, take forever to watch this video. So you want to get rid of the Business One client. You want to get rid of the client agent. You want to get rid of the DI API, and you want to also get rid of the Crystal Reports runtime engine for .NET Framework. In this case, I also have, this is my demo machine, so I also have a lot of other components, but you don't need to get rid of Crystal Reports. I'm gonna just leave Crystal, Crystal Reports there anyways, okay? SAP Business One Client, SAP Business One Client Agent, DI API, and your Crystal Reports runtime engine for .NET Framework, okay? I'm gonna just skip ahead here. Okay, so now that that's done, you need to go ahead and delete the folders for SAP Business One, the... So again, I have all the server components and stuff on here. What you need to do is get rid of SAP Business One, DI API, and then one other one. So delete, continue. So now that those folders are deleted, you also need to remove the SAP Business Objects folder. For you, if that's all you have on your server, you can just remove that. For me, I have other things on here. So I go SAP Business Objects. Normally you could just delete this, but I am just gonna remove the .NET Framework out of there. Uh, next thing you need to do is remove the temp folder file. So just click this Start button, click Run, push Temp, percentage temp percentage just like this once you're in temp you're going to look for uh, this file right this folder primarily here usually i honestly just go everything delete everything you know this stuff doesn't really matter uh, in this case you sm obs dll there might be a 64-bit one if you're using 64-bit uh, client for some reason so you go ahead and delete that Next, you want to delete your uh, app data and you want to get rid of the other folders in there too. So you're going to have SAP stuff in here. Going to delete it. I don't know what this is. Let me get rid of that too. Then you want to go to app data, local low. I don't think there's usually anything in there. And app data roaming. Remove SAP. So you can get to these by going to C, Users, Your Username, App Data, and then you just kind of move around in there. So this is really good for removing uh, add-ons and things that get stuck. People a lot of times forget that point there. Now there's another uh, method which is pretty extreme. But uh, I do use this in the case of extreme measures. I'm going to install CCleaner. You are going to get a whole bunch of opinions on this. And in my opinion, you know, there was a version that got hacked of this, but I think it's just because it's such a popular product. Uh, you know, as long as you watch out, get it from CCleaner. 
and you can download it. So it goes here, run it, Puriform. Okay, no, I don't want a vast. Just make sure you do that. Turn that off. I am gonna install this here. So what this does is it gets rid of a whole bunch of uh, dead links, especially from your registry. I just use the registry fix. I, you can use the cleaner too, but the registry fix is what you want. Scan for issues, missing DLLs. So this scans your whole system. And this has been absolutely critical in a lot of issues with add-ons and things. Uh, stuff gets stuck and it just like won't install, it won't uninstall. And sometimes it's just having an issue run, uh, cleaning out the registry. So this is what you use. If your situation is not too extreme, you don't need to use it, but this is gonna remove all the SAP stuff. You're gonna find some SAP stuff in here for sure. SAP, 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 look at all these, look at all this stuff. Gatekeeper, da, 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 da. junk, 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 you don't need. Okay, fix, I just say fix, yes. Save it in the default location, fix all issues. Like I said, I have used this so many times to fix issues that appear to be unfixable, okay? I'm not afraid to do this, I've never had issues with it. it I don't know how it does it exactly, but it's amazing. So do that. Next thing you wanna do is find your installer files. So if you have your SAP Business One client running on another machine, you just need to know what the actual SAP server is. And then you will do this. You will go backslash backslash M Taylor P50. That's the name of my machine backslash. You'll have a, a B1 share, so wherever your B1 share directory is. If you are uh, looking for this and you have no clue, look on another machine and push choose company. And when you push choose company, you're going to see at the top the server name. That's the name that you use, backslash, backslash, server name. That's where B1 share is, the one under choose company on a working SAP Business One client. So it should be easy to find, I can show you later. You go to B1 Share, you go to the client, and then you right click and run as administrator. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. There are almost no options. Any issue that you have with add-ons or whatever should be resolved by now with CCleaner. Remember to run it right from the client. Previously, it, it made sense to copy it to the desktop. And uh, now you don't you don't have to. In fact, it's it's a bad thing. Run it right from B1 Share because there are prerequisites in there as well. Uh, the prerequisites may be needed and it may try to use those. If you try to just copy this to the desktop, you might not be able to reach those prerequisites, so I usually just leave it there. I don't know. Again, it's uh, it's it's the way that it works for me. So this is installing. So I'll probably skip ahead here. Okay, so at this point, you do need to know the exact same spot that you got the client files from. So only under weird circumstances will it be something else. So maybe you moved your B1 share for some reason. In this case, I need this M Taylor P50. It's never gonna be localhost. Okay, port should be defaults. Again, if you're changing ports, you don't need my help. Then you just let everything install. And once this is installed, we're going to fix up the DI API. So we're gonna go see program files x86. If you're 32 bit, if you're 64 bit, go this way. I'm gonna be 32 bit today. Go to SAP, go to DI API, go to conf, 
right click b1 local machine.xml click edit or open with in this case i'm going to click edit i'm using i'm using uh notepad 2 oh, this is new this is new that's cool they modify the di api this is like 9.3 brand new Control H, replace localhost, replace with your machine name. Same name as the B1 share, same name as your uh, license server that you set in the um, DI API, M Taylor P50. Okay, save it. It's not going to let you save it directly there. So you want to save as exactly how it is on the desktop. And then when it's on the desktop, right click, drag it and move it back in to replace it in the DI API. So this isn't necessarily needed for the client, but this helps with like B1 up and stuff. Now what you want to do is remove CCleaner. You don't want to leave that crap on your machine. Next, uninstall. Easy peasy. Delete that. Uh, pin this. Let's go. And we're going to go pin to taskbar. Unpin. Pin it again. And I'll move it over there. I always delete it off the desktop. Like, you shouldn't have it on there. I, I also ping it to the start, so it should be in the start menu. It is there, but I never click there to run it. Okay, right click, run as administrator the first time you run it. You may be prompted here to enter your SLD address. Again, that's mtaylor-p50 for me. Depends what you are going to use. But uh, in this case, I'm on SQL 2014. You could just toggle between these until you find it. So if it prompts you for a license or a system landscape directory, use this one. And this is the exact one that you would use at the beginning. So if you Remember, you can look at this first if you're unsure. Look at this first under the Choose Company and see what the name of your B1 share folder would be. So it'd be backslash backslash M Taylor P50. And that's where the B1 share and the client files are. So um, now you can log in. Oh. And when you log in, it'll go and it'll detect if any of the uh, add-ons have not installed. In this case, it's going to install B1 up. And there you go. So in that case, I just had to install B1 up. You could have multiple add-ons that should install there and be connected. This is the whole process I use. I sped up some of the installation parts. So hopefully this video has been really useful to you. Leave a comment down below, a like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Go to battleshipcobra.com for all my other stuff. Bye for now, guys.